Continuing on our journey talking about inheritance, this bit is going to be uh, a bit about abstract classes and a few other concepts. This is actually going to be a very handy video to watch before test two, I think, because uh, th this concept is not tightly tied to lab three, but it's an important concept. So it is possible to create a class strictly for inheritance, and this is called an abstract class. So the idea is maybe you have a class called person, and then you derive from it um, a student, a teacher, an employee, whatever. Um, earlier, Kevin had uh, one about instantiating objects, and he had a group of dogs. It could be that there's a dog class, and then several subclasses that are breeds, and the, the breeds all have their own features. And you would never instantiate a dog without a breed, you would only instantiate the different breeds. So you could have constructors for the different breeds that would make these useful instances of dog. It is possible to make an abstract class without declaring it as abstract. You would just choose not to instantiate it. But you can also uh, specify it by using the keyword must inherit. The methods that uh, this class might have, if they have to be overridden, they have to have the keyword must override. So you could make kind of a placeholder for a method that every subclass would require using must override. Uh, as a bit more of a close to home example, um, here at Durham, we're all in this system called Banner, and we all have a Banner ID. So each of us, it, you might call it your student number, but it's that 1009 digit number. We're all associated with a Banner ID, and they have a name for each of us, they have an address for each of us, a birth date for each of us, and probably a lot of other things, maybe some of which we don't even know about. I've never been into the depths here, so I'm not sure. So these could be considered to be class properties of a, an abstract class called Person. Now suppose there are subclasses of person. There's probably more than this, but let's just go with faculty and student for now. They're going to have all of those properties mentioned earlier, but they're also going to have some of their own. So they can both log into My Campus and DC Connect. So maybe logging into those two services are methods. Only faculty can enter grades. Students can't do that. And only students have DC mail accounts. This is probably a good opportunity to remind you that you have a DC mail account. And it seems like DC mail is not very well advertised to the student body here yet. Uh, so I'd encourage you to log in and check your DC mail. So these methods would be defined as a part of these subclasses. This is more of a computer science thing. We're not, we're not going to go into detail with this, but this is a class diagram. So here's an example where we've got a person body and then two subclasses, and there's student and there's faculty. And so person has several properties and methods, and then we've got a student and a faculty subclass that have the ability to log into DC mail or enter grades. We wouldn't instantiate just a person. Uh, there's no reason for us to do that, but we might do it for student and faculty. And so it, it's a bit of an efficiency having those properties on the person. If you like this kind of diagram, if, if this kind of thing helps you to understand uh, inheritance, I'd, I'd recommend a quick Google search for class diagrams. You can see some pretty neat ones just in the first several results. To go back to accessibility, and we've already touched on this when I was going through the payroll class, but you need to be aware of this for your lab. And most people did a pretty good job with this for lab 2B. So there was a lot of use of friend in lab 2B, although some people did protected friend and it worked reasonably well. Protected is going to come into play for, for 3B. Protected means it's accessible from anywhere inside this class or any class that inherits from this class. So you're going to need that for the things that you want the senior piecework worker to to inherit. So please do pay attention to that. 